Okay, for this problem, we want to find uh, a basis for the solution to the system, and uh, we also want to find the dimension of that solution space. So uh, what I would do to solve this system is I would first turn this into an augmented matrix in the way that we have done. So uh, let me go ahead and do that really quickly. And what I would do now to um, solve this is I would apply the elementary row operations until I got this into, um, you know, either REF or RREF. So I'm only going to do it into REF form. And I'm going to skip all the steps because we've actually done this problem before. We did this in chapter one. Um, and if you want to work through the details, you can, or if you want to look through my notes that I posted, um, I have those details. So I'm going to get this in REF form. And REF form for this looks like the following. Of course, this is a homogeneous system, so I'm going to get zeros uh, on the right-hand side of the bar anyway. Uh, but then I will get... this for the REF form. The reason why this is not in our REF form is because you'll notice the leading ones um, are for X1, X3, and X6, but I don't have all zeros uh, for the remaining entries uh, in those columns. In particular, I've got this negative two here and this three there. I could keep going uh, and get this in our REF form, but there's no point really in doing that uh, for this problem. So uh, let's go ahead and let's solve for this. Again, I've got leading ones for the columns corresponding to X1, X3, and X6. So that means X2, X4, and X5 are free variables. And again, because they are free, what I will do is I will just say, uh, and I'm going to be consistent with what I put in the notes, X2 is R, X4 is S, and X5 is is t. And so now I'm going to use these equations to figure out uh, the other three. So if I look, of course, the last line here is 0 equals 0. I'm not really going to deal with that any. But the uh, third line is x6 equals 0. So notice, uh, no matter what the solution is to this system, x6 must be 0. There's no other option. Now the second line is x3 plus 2x4 plus 3x6 equals 0. Well, if I use that x6 is 0, I can just forget about this part. And if I put x4 as s right here and solve for x3, x3 would be negative 2x4, which is negative 2s. Um, and then I could do the same thing for the top one. So that's x1 plus 3x2 minus 2x3 plus 2x5 equals 0. And so, of course, when I'm solving for x1 here, I am going to change the sign of each one of these um, and then plug in what it's equal to. So it's going to be negative 3x2. And, of course, x2 is r, so I'll go ahead and put that there. And then I'll have plus 2 x3. Well, I just solved for x3. It was negative 2s, so I'll put that in as well. And then I'll have minus 2x5, and x5, of course, uh, was t. So when I solve for x1, I get negative 3r minus 4s minus 2t. So I now have a solution to this, uh, x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, x6, equals, and then I'm going to put in for each um, component what it should equal. So for example, x1 was this, x2 was r, x3 was negative 2s, x4 was s, x5 was t, and x6 is 0. 
So this is what any solution looks like. Now notice that um, what R, S, and T are uh, basically give us what these, uh, what this solution, what this particular vector in the solution would be. So what I can do is I can actually write this as um, R times some vector, same with S and same with T. So uh, if I were saying, what is R multiplied by? Well, in the first component, it's multiplied by negative three. In the second component, it's multiplied by one. And then X3 through X6, there aren't any R's in there. So all of those components would be zero. I could do the same thing for S. Uh, notice I would have negative four. There are no S's in the second component, but the third is negative two. The fourth is one. And then there aren't any S's in the last two. And then T... Um, I don't have any, or I've got negative two in the first one, and then I don't have any t's in the next three components, but I have one t in the fifth one and none in the last. So notice that uh, my solution can be written in this way. And notice what this is. This is a linear combination of this, this, and this vector. So what that means is these three vectors span the entire solution uh, set for this homogeneous system. And so I've got one half of what I need for the basis that uh, I've got the three vectors that span. Uh, and so what I need to see now is are these vectors um, linearly independent. So I'm going to refer to these as V1, V2, and V3. So now what I'm trying to solve is uh, C1, V1, plus C2, V2, plus C3, V3 equals zero. Um, I'd like to show that these are linearly independent, so I'd like to show that the solution to this equation is that C1, C2, and C3 must all be zero. Now, we've done problems like this before. Basically, these vectors I'm going to write in column form, uh, and those are going to be the columns for my new augmented matrix. So let me set that up now. Uh, so that would look like, let's see, negative three, one, and zeros all the way down for that column. Negative four, 0, negative 2, 1, 0, 0 for the second, and negative 2, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. And again, I'm trying to solve the homogeneous uh, system, so I'm going to augment that with all zeros. And so I am going to now apply um, EROs to this uh, in order to um, see, you know, what this solution, or what the solution for the C's would look like. Remember, this is the column for C1, this one's for C2, this one's for C3. Well, again, um, I put this in REF form, and if you want to uh, work out those details, I think that would be good practice, but you can also see what the um, solution looks like uh, in my notes, so I'm going to give you the uh, final result here. So... After applying all of these R, uh, EROs, excuse me, oops, that's a one. Uh, and then I have zeros the rest of the way down. And of course, this is homogeneous, so all of these are going to be zeros anyway. So if I look at what these three equations are, the top equation is C1 plus 4 thirds C2 plus 2 thirds C3 equals zero. The second one is C2 plus half C3 equals zero, and the third one is C3 equals zero. Remember, I'm trying to show that all the C's, C1, C2, and C3, are all zero. Well, of course, C3 would be zero. And now if I reverse plug in, if that's zero, this goes away, so C2 would have to be zero as well. And then given that both of these are zeros, both terms here go away, and C1 must be zero. So C1, C2, and C3 are all zero. And that's what shows that the three vectors I came up with are linearly independent. So those three vectors, um, in fact, let me go ahead and 
rewrite these. Uh, these three vectors not only span, that was the first thing that I showed, um, but they're also linearly independent. That's what I showed right here. So the basis is um, these vectors. And now that I know that this is a basis, uh, the answer for what the dimension is is very easy. Remember that the dimension uh, essentially is how many vectors uh, are in your basis. Remember that any basis uh, for, a, for a space has the same number of vectors, and that is the dimension. So this dimension would have to be three. Uh, and one uh, remark uh, about this, that, that is the end of the problem. But one remark is that if you have a homogeneous system, um, the method that we use right here is always going to uh, give us a basis. So for example, when you get um, down to here and you've got your spanning set, um, that spanning set will be um, linearly independent. Uh, that will always be the case. So. Uh, I worked it through this time because we didn't know that, and uh, we haven't proven that, but I am giving you that piece of information. So um, I hope that makes sense, and if you have any questions, please let me know.